A reading from the first book of Kings. After the death of Naboth, the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, Start down to meet Ahab, king of Israel, who rules in Syria. He will be in the vineyard of Naboth, of which he has come to take possession. This is what you shall tell him. The Lord says, After murdering, do you also take possession? For this the Lord says, In the place where the dogs licked up, licked up the blood of Naboth, the dogs shall lick, lick up your blood too. Ahab said to Elijah, Have you found me out, my enemy? Yes, he answered. Because you have given yourself up to doing evil in the Lord's sight, I am bringing evil upon you. I will destroy you and will cut off every male in Ahab's line, whether slave or free man in Israel. I will make your house like that of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, and like the Basha, son of Ahijah, because of how you have provoked me by leading Israel into sin. Against Jezebel too, the Lord declared, the dogs shall devour Jezebel in the district of Jezreel. When one of Ahab's line dies in the city, dogs will devour him. When one of them dies in the field, the birds of the sky will devour him. Indeed, no one gave himself up to the doing of evil in the sight of the Lord as did Ahab, urged on by his wife Jezebel. He became completely abominable by following idols, just as the Amorites had done, whom the Lord drove out before the children of Israel. When Ahab heard these words, he tore his garments and put on sackcloth over his bare flesh. He fasted, slept in the sackcloth, and went about subdued. Then the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, have you seen that Ahab has humbled himself before me? Since he has humbled himself before me, I will not bring the evil in his time. I will bring the evil upon his house during the reign of his son. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt, and of my sin cleanse me. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. For I acknowledge my offense, and my sin is before me always. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Turn away your face from my sins, and blot out all my guilt. Free me from blood guilt, O God, my saving God. Then my tongue shall revel in your justice. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, You've heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, Love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your heavenly Father. For he makes his Son to rise on the good and the bad, and causes rain to fall on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what recompense will you have? Do not tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brothers only, what is unusual about that? Do not pagans do the same? So be perfect, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> a 
The meditation for this day in the Magnificat publication from Father B. Jarrett suggests that what this final command here is all about is that we should be perfect as human beings in the same way that God is perfect as God. It doesn't mean that we are perfect as God, but we are perfect for who and what we're supposed to be. So what does that mean? Well, in an essay that he wrote, um, reflecting on his own play, A Man for All Seasons, Robert Bolt started the essay by saying this, A man for all seasons is a good man. Maybe not perfect, okay, but we'll, we'll settle for good for the, for the purposes of the analogy here. He says, A man for all seasons is a good man. I don't mean morally good, though no doubt he would be that also, but I mean good for what a man is for. What is a man for? A good knife is a sharp knife, because a knife is for cutting. A good orange is a sweet orange, because an orange is for eating. But what is a man for? And he reflects on that possibility. Well, it's pretty hard, I think, to say what a man is for. It might be a little easier to say what he's not for. And that takes us to Ahab and Jezebel and Naboth and Elijah. Naboth owned a piece of property. Ahab wanted it. Naboth says you can't have it. So, as the scripture told us yesterday, uh, false accusation and basically a legal lynching took place. And Naboth is stoned to death. Now he's dead. Now Ahab can get the property. That's the scene now for our confrontation. Now, it's not an accident, it's not an accident that the psalm that we have as a psalm response is Psalm 51. Because if you hear the, uh, the whole story that we have it here with Naboth and Elijah and Ahab, it's very, very similar to the story of Nathan and David and Bathsheba. In both cases, you got a vicious crime that is being found out by a prophet and the person is condemned. Now, in both cases here, in fact, David's and here in Ahab's, they repent, sackcloth and ashes and all that kind of thing, okay? What's the difference? The difference is that the one thing that Ahab and Jezebel do not repent of is the worship of idols or of demons, okay? David, in spite of his sins, wants to be with the Lord. There's the big difference there. And so, for us, what we can understand is that if we are not going to act as children of God, then, then we are not good persons. That, if you like, some of what it is that causes us to be good people is to be aligned with God, to be people who live and love the way God lays out the, pa the plan. Now, I don't think too many of us fall down before statues but we may well have other idols that we would want to ask ourselves, okay, how compromised are we as opposed to wholehearted in our attachment to and our devotion to God? That's a good question for us. And when we answer that question properly, then we'll come a lot closer to the command of the gospel today to be perfect as the Heavenly Father is perfect. Let us stand and pray.